One thing you may have noticed in the previous video about threads is that there was no obvious way to get a result from the functions we pushed onto other threads. Nothing in the std thread interface gives us access to the return value of the function we ask it to run. In this video, we're going to talk about how to handle asynchronous results and how to run asynchronous functions with non-void return values. When we call a normal function, we can immediately use the return value when the function returns. The function call blocks our thread, so we know the return value is ready when we get control back from the function. Asynchronous functions complicate this, because the result isn't ready when we get control back. When we start an asynchronous task, we usually get control back immediately, and the task runs in another thread. We need some way of keeping track of the result we expect to get from the task and check if it's ready or not. And this is what a future is. Stood future is a class that provides a handle representing the result of an asynchronous task. The idea is that an asynchronous function can return a future instead of a plain value, and the caller can use the future to wait for the result to be ready and get the result. Stood future has a pretty simple interface with four important functions. The first three are functions that wait for the result to be ready. Wait blocks the caller until the result is ready. Wait for and wait until allow us to block for a certain amount of time or until the result is ready, whichever happens first. These timed variants are more common because they prevent our code from becoming unresponsive while waiting for the asynchronous task to finish. And finally, the get function gives us the result value. Note that if the result isn't ready when we call get, it will call wait internally with no timeout. Hopefully it's becoming clear how future helps us handle asynchronous results. We get a future back when we start an async task, wait for it to be ready, and then get the result value from it. So how do we get a future? Well, there are a couple ways, but we'll just talk about one today, std async. Async is a function that runs another function for us asynchronously. It wraps up our function and returns a future to our function's return value. It will manage the creation and joining of the thread for us. In cases where you just want some calculation to be done concurrently and want the result back when it's ready, it's usually easier to use async instead of directly creating and managing your own thread. One important note about async is that it will sometimes defer the calculation to use lazy evaluation. This means that the task doesn't actually run on another thread, but runs on your thread when you call get on the future. By default, making the decision to defer the function is left up to the system. If you want to ensure that your function is run in a specific way, you can pass an execution policy as the first argument to async. If you pass in std launch async, your function will always run on another thread. But if you pass in std launch deferred, your function will always be deferred for lazy evaluation. The default policy is a bitwise or of these two policy values, which is why the system gets to pick. Let's go take a look at an example using future and async. Here's a program that's very similar to the example we used to demonstrate threads. The important change here is that our job functions now return integers instead of void. The all jobs function calls each function synchronously and prints out the return values. Just like last time, we see that the program takes two seconds to run both jobs on the main thread. Let's change this code to take advantage of async and futures. To start, we need to include the future header, which gives us the future type and async function. Then down in the all jobs function, we've replaced our function calls with calls to std async. We give async the function we want it to call and the arguments we want it to pass to that function. Async then returns a future of the function's return value type. We're saving those two futures as fa and fb. At the end of our function, when we want to print out the results, we call get on each future. In the middle, we have a while loop that waits for job a to complete. We're using the wait for function so we can continue doing some work while job A is running. In this case, we're waiting for 100 milliseconds. If the future is not ready by then, it will return the timeout status and we print out a message. If the future was ready, wait for would return std future status ready and our loop would end. Note that we're only waiting on job A to finish. The call to get on FB will block until that result is ready. In real code where we're concerned about keeping our program responsive while waiting on background tasks, we'd want to make sure to wait for both futures in a loop similar to the one we have here. You'll see futures come up pretty frequently as we start working with ROS services and actions. These are both asynchronous network-based tasks. Their interfaces often return futures for results that depend on hearing back from another node, so our node doesn't get frozen waiting for those responses. In those cases, you'll see this same pattern of get a result, call wait in a loop, and then call get to get the result. 